In this video, I'll show you how to graph trigonometric functions using a table of values in polar coordinates. To plot a point P in reference to its radius and its polar angle, first assign a suitable scale to the radii, then place a point on the graph at a radius r and an angle theta. A point with a radius of negative r, this part's important, is plotted in the opposite direction as positive r. The first thing that I'll do for question one, where they ask us to graph the function r is equal to cosine theta for angles between 0 and 360 degrees, is I'll use my calculator to find out all my r values ranging from 0 to 360. To demonstrate what I mean, I'm going to turn on my calculator and type in cosine to make sure that your calculator is in degrees. Cosine at 0 is equal to 1. Cosine at 30 is equal to the square root of 3 over 2. And I would write that down in decimal form because it makes more sense when it comes to graphing. And if you do this correctly, you should end up with a table that looks like this. Now that I've filled out my table, the next thing that I'll do is analyze my radii. Notice that my radii range from negative 1 to positive 1. Since we don't want to work with negative radii, we'll take the range from 0 to 1. And the polar chart paper that I have is this. And I'll break it down into intervals that will lead me to positive 1. And we don't want any negative radii here. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We can use 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, decimal 8, and 1. Our first point is an angle of 0 with a radius of 1. Let's use the color red to denote that point. So that right there is our first point. Our next point is at 30 degrees and a radius of 0 0.87. So remember, this is 1, and so is this. And of course, so is that, and so is that. It's going to get messy, so prepare for it. 30 degrees is over here, and 0 0.87 will be just less than 1, but greater than 0 0.8. So it'll be around here. My next point is 60 degrees, so I locate 60 here. And that's going to be half the distance of 1, which is approximately here. My next point is 90 degrees and 0. That means we'll have a point right at the center. I'm going to go ahead and connect these points with a curvy line. And I'm assuming that if I picked an angle between 60 and 30, I would get a point right above the 2. So what we have formed here is a semicircle. Let's continue. At 120 degrees, we have a radius of negative 0.5. And if you recall that a point with a negative radii is plotted in the opposite direction. So at 120 degrees, we have negative 0.5, which is the midway point between 1 and 0. But instead of being plotted here, I'm going to plot it in the opposite direction. So it's going to be plotted right here. My next point is at 150 degrees and negative 0 0.87. Locating negative 150 is right here. And since the radius is negative, it will be plotted in the opposite direction. Remember, this is 1. 0 0.87 would be right here. But of course, it's in the opposite direction. So follow along until you reach this point. Our next point is negative 180 and negative 1. So here's 180 and negative 1 would be in the opposite direction, so we would have a point right here, superimposing this one. Let's connect these points as we did before. We will end up with a perfect circle. So I've gone ahead and drawn a circle passing through all of those points. And what's interesting, if I continue to plot these points, they'll continue to land on the same points we just plotted. For example, at 210, so that's right here, we have an r value of negative 0.87. This means that 1 is over here, negative 0.87 would be around here, but in the opposite direction, it would be this point that we already plotted. Let's move on to another function. This time we're asked to graph the function r is equal to tan theta for angles between 0 and 2 pi. 
Once again, we will use our calculator, but make sure that it's in radians. And to make that change on this calculator, you click Shift, Mode, and you put it in radians. So let's do a few. Let's say we had tangent at zero. We get zero, so you'd fill this in with zero. Tangent at pi over six is the square root of three over three. And that is equivalent to 0 0.58. And I'm going to go ahead and fill out this table. And if you do it successfully, your completed table should end up looking like this. OK, so I've gone ahead and plotted my R values for each of these corresponding angles. And we discovered that when we evaluate a tangent at pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2, we get no output. So I put an NA for that. Furthermore, our radius ranges from negative 1.7 all the way to positive 1.7. This means that a good range would be between 0 and 2. To do that, we'll break this down into increments of thirds. So that's 1 over 3, 2 over 3, 1, 1 and a third, 1 and 2 thirds, and 2. Our first point has already been plotted at 0 and 0. Our next point was pi over 6 and 0 0.58. So pi over 6 and 0 0.58 will be between these. So we'll put a point down right there. Next we have pi over 3 and a radius of 1.7. Pi over 3 is here. 1.7, that's the largest number that we're going to have. That's going to be here. So we kind of have something that's starting to look like this. At pi over 2, we have nothing. That's not assigned. 2 pi over 3, we have negative 1.7. Now, since this is negative, it's going to go in the opposite direction. And the point was here that we had when it was positive. So it's going to travel down here. The next point is 5 pi over 6, which is this point, And it's negative 0 0.58. Remember, this one is 2, and the third ring from the middle is 1. So negative 0 0.58 will be the equivalent of this point, and it's at an angle of 5 over 6. So going in the opposite direction, we have a point right here. Once again, what we can do is extend from the center to these two points that we just plotted. Let's continue. At pi, we have 0. That will be this point. Then we have 7 pi over 6. 7 pi over 6 is 0 0.58. So 7 pi over 6 is 0 0.58. That goes in the correct direction, which will be approximately here. 4 pi over 3 has a radius of 1.7. So that will be 4 pi over 3, this point right here. Connecting now these. This is starting to look like a spider. Let's continue. At 3 pi over 2, we have no output. At 5 pi over 3, which is in the fourth quadrant, we have negative 1.7. So 5 pi over 3, we have negative 1.7. That will be over here. Lastly, we have 11 pi over 6. 11 pi over 6 is this angle, and it's negative 0 0.58. So if we follow along this line, we will get a point that is right here. And it should be the mirror image of this point. And if we connect this, we will end up with what appears to look like a spider. And so there you have it. That is how to graph trigonometric functions using a table of values in polar coordinates.